हिंदुस्थानावर चालून आली शहाची प्रचंड आंधी तेव्हा तलवार हाती घेऊन निघाले साठ हजार वीर मराठी हिंदुस्थानाच रक्षण करायला झुंजली पेशवाई पानिपताच्या रणांगणावर झाली भीषण लढाई द मराठा एम्पायर फॉर्म्ड इन द डेन्स फॉरेस्ट ऑफ द सह्याद्री माउंटेन रेंज बाय अ ग्रुप ऑफ बॉयज लेड बाय छत्रपती शिवाजी महाराज विथ द सोल पर्पस ऑफ स्वराज्य पॅन इंडिया इंडिपेंडन्स अँड ओव्हर द कोर्स ऑफ थर्टी इयर्स छत्रपती शिवाजी महाराज एस्टॅब्लिश्ड अ सॉलिड एम्पायर स्ट्रेचिंग फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र टू तामिळनाडू थर्टी नाईन इयर्स आफ्टर छत्रपती शिवाजी महाराज इन सेव्हन्टीन नाईन्टीन बाळाजी विश्वनाथ भट द पेशवा ऑफ छत्रपती शाहू महाराज रीच द गेट्स ऑफ डेल्ली थ्रू अ ट्रीटी द मराठा रॉयल फॅमिली कॅप्चर्ड इन सिक्स्टीन एटी नाईन वॉज रिलीस्ड टॅक्सेस इक्वल टू सिक्स डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ द डेक्कन वेअर कलेक्टेड अँड ऑल्सो द मुघल मॉनार्क फरुख सियर वॉज डिपोज दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट टाईम द मराठाज हॅड एव्हर एंटर्ड डेल्ली अँड दिस वॉज ऑल्सो द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द एरा ऑफ कॉन्क्वेस्ट इन सेव्हन्टीन ट्वेंटी बाळाजी विश्वनाथ भट पास अवे अँड हिज एल्डेस्ट सन बाजीराव बल्लाळ वॉज मेड द नेक्स्ट पेशवा अँड बाजीराव ॲट द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी मेड हिज पॉईंट प्रेटी क्लिअर just one strike with an axe will cut the roots of the tree at delhi the trunk will splinter to pieces and the branches will fall into our hands over the course of his tenure bajirao peshwa defeated the mughals and the nizam in several battles along with his generals malhar rao holkar rano ji shinde pilaji jadhav rao and the pawar brothers bajirao peshwa's younger brother chima ji appa also fought numerous battles against the portuguese and the siddhi of janjira he was their worst nightmare in 1739 chimaji appa captured the fort of vasai which was a very important fort and that allowed the marathas to keep good control over the kokan coast now bajirao peshwa over the course of his tenure of 20 years expanded the maratha empire from shri rangapatnam to the gates of delhi and he never lost a battle in his entire tenure the day was 28th april 1740 having won a battle against nasir jung the son of nizam ul mulk asaf ja the marathas were camped beside the narmada river in the city of ravar khedi bajirao peshwa was suffering from a very high fever and on that day he passed away bajirao peshwa's eldest son Balaji Baji Rao or popularly known as Nana Saheb was made the next Peshwa and Nana Saheb being a boy of 19 had many things to take care of Baji Rao Peshwa expanded the Maratha state that was only a few districts small from Sri Rangapatnam to Delhi in a matter of 20 years so that is why Nana Saheb had to dispatch officers all around the Maratha territory so that the Maratha empire can be held together At the same time Bajirao Peshwa was always under debt and so was the Maratha Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj and so now Nana Saheb Peshwa had to clear his father's and his monarch's debt also the monarch's two queens were always in a constant tussle and the monarch gave Nana Saheb Peshwa the responsibility to resolve their problems so Nana Saheb had to take care of many things at a very young age however he was capable and shahu maharaj knew that and that is why during his last days shahu maharaj told nana saheb and i quote that you can only keep this maratha empire together only you can keep the empire together so you have to take power in your hands after i pass away remember your father's dream remember his ideal take the maratha zari patka to the gates of atak in 1749 Shahu Maharaj passed away and a prince Ram Raja or Raja Ram the 2nd was placed on the Maratha throne however he was only a titular chhatrapati the power was in the hands of Nana Saheb Peshwa the sovereign was Nana Saheb Peshwa and now the next goal of the Peshwa was handling the Nizam in the Deccan and expanding the Maratha empire northwards so let's learn about that now On the night of 19th June 1747 the tyrant Afghan king Nadir Shah was murdered by a group of rebel guards his most trusted servant Ahmed Khan Abdali was proclaimed as the new emperor Ahmed Khan Abdali belonged to the Abdali tribe 
and when he became the emperor he proclaimed himself as dur e duran or pearl of pearls he changed the name of his tribe abdali to durani and henceforth he was known as ahmad shah durani ahmad shah's sardars were shah wali khan shah pasand khan and jaha khan and over the course of his reign he was to invade india nine times in 1747 Ahmad Shah Abdali captured Kabul and Peshawar and in 1748 he captured Lahore next he entered India and he had to face the Mughal empire in the battle of Manipur and in which he lost however the Mughal wazir Kamruddin Khan was killed in 1747 Nadir Shah was murdered in 1748 Muhammad Shah the Mughal emperor died in 1749 Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj passed away Subsequently, Nizam ul Mulk, Sawai Jai Singh, Abhay Singh of Jodhpur, Wazir Kamruddin Khan, and Zulfikar Khan, the Governor of Punjab, also died. This was followed by the suicide of Ishwari Singh of Jaipur. Nasir Jung, the son of the Nizam, was also killed, and so was the grandson of the Nizam, Muzaffar Jung. Due to these repeated deaths, the withering of the Mughals, rise of the Peshwa and Abdali, were signs. that soon abdali was stretching his power towards india and the peshwa who was stretching his power towards present day pakistan would soon fight for power over north india on april 12 1752 wazir safdar jung of the mughal empire or the nawab of awadh signed a treaty with peshwa nana saheb on behalf of the mughal emperor The treaty was that the Peshwa would protect the Mughal throne from all internal and external threats but what was the reward for the Marathas the reward was 50 lakh rupees in addition to that the Marathas could collect the chort tax from the Ganga Yamuna Dwag Sindh and Punjab the Peshwa was also given the governorship of Ajmer and Agra this treaty was very profitable for the Marathas and all of these territories which were given to the Peshwa were territories that madho singh of jaipur and the jats also wanted and that is why the conflict between three indian powers jaipur the marathas and the jats increased in october 1752 ghazi uddin the eldest son of nizam ul mulk asaf ja was coming back to the deccan from delhi he was invited by his step mother for dinner and was poisoned to death ghazi uddin's son imad ul mulk was 16 years old and he was at delhi uh, imadul mulk was made the mir bakshi by ahmad shah the mughal emperor and was kept in care of safdar jung the nawab of awadh in 1754 safdar jung died and on 1st june imadul mulk who was only 18 years old at that time was made the new wazir of the mughal empire by ahmad shah now imadul mulk was a very sly person the very next day he imprisoned ahmad shah he had complete control of the mughal empire now however he decided to kill ahmad shah and in jail ahmad shah was blinded and the mughal monarch was killed now out of all of the princes uh, one prince called alamgir the second was picked out placed on the throne all the power was still in the wazir's hand which means imadul mulk's hand imadul mulk was the marathas ally so in 1755 when shrimant raghunath rao the younger brother of nana saheb peshwa then 18 years old led his first campaign to the north imadul mulk assisted him and in august 1755 shrimant raghunath rao returned to the deccan again at the end of the year 1756 najib khan rohila or najib uddola the rohila chief of the ganga yamuna dwab started to conspire against the wazir of delhi imad ul mulk he was also the sworn enemy of the marathas the marathas have referred to najibuddaula as a snake now najibuddaula knew that no other power can destroy the maratha empire other than ahmad shah abdali so najibuddaula invited ahmad shah abdali and in january 1757 abdali entered delhi imadul mulk tried for a truce but that truce didn't work out 
Finally, on January 19, 1757, Imadul Mulk surrendered and Najib Uddala was given charge of Delhi. Intazam Uddala, who was the son of the former Wazir Kamruddin Khan, was made the new Wazir. Imadul Mulk was deposed and Abdali left Delhi towards Mathura. And in Mathura, uh, Abdali carried out a huge slaughter and massacre. Temples were broken, people were killed. It is said that the Yamuna turned red and over the course of seven days, it started to turn yellow. Now, no one could do anything that time. Even the Marathas were completely powerless. Antaji Mankeshwar, the Marathas representative at Delhi, did try to retaliate. However, thousands of Marathas were massacred by uh, Jaha Khan, the commander of Ahmad Shah Abdali. And Jaha Khan and Najib Uddala were given robes of honor because of that. Now, Antaji Mankeshwar, Jawahir Singh, the son of Suraj Maljat, and Shamsher Bahadur, the half-brother of the Peshwa, had to escape from the Ballabgarh fort, which was the fort of the Jats. And it was also captured by Ahmad Shah Abdali. And after that huge massacre, the Yamuna was completely polluted. So the disease cholera completely infected Abdali's camp. Abdali returned to Delhi. Intizam Uddala, who was appointed Wazir, was again deposed. Imadul Mulk was again uh, reappointed as the Wazir. And Najib Uddala was appointed as the Mir Bakshi. Now, in October 1756, Raghunath Rao made his way to the north and he was there in the north when Ahmad Shah Abdali was massacring all those people. However, Raghunath Rao Peshwa had literally no funds, not enough soldiers to deal with Abdali. So when Abdali finally left, Raghunath Rao decided to strike. In May 1757, the Marathas entered Agra and in July, Anup Shar was captured by Antaji Mankeshwar. The Marathas then attacked Delhi and Najib Uddala was defeated. However, Najib paid Holkar handsomely and Malhara Holkar just allowed him to go. And this stupid decision was going to cost the Marathas heavily in the future. Then the Marathas captured Lahore on 19 April 1758. After the capture of Lahore, Srimanth Raghunath Rao along with Manaji Paigude attacked and captured Atak which became the boundary between the Maratha Empire and the Afghan Empire. Srimanth Raghunath Rao sent Tukoji Holkar and Sabaji Shinde to capture Peshawar after that. Adina Beg, who was the governor of the Jalandhar Doab was kept in charge of Punjab. The Marathas were now at their peak in the north. Nanasai Peshwa along with his cousin Sadashivrao Bhau had won an incredible victory at Sindhkhed against the Nizam. Now Raghunath Rao on September 15th, 1758 returned to the Deccan and just when he returned, Adina Beg, who was given charge of um, Punjab died and Sabaji Shinde took charge from Lahore. Shrimanta Raghunath Rao was undoubtedly a great soldier. He expanded the Maratha Empire directly to Peshawar. However, whenever a certain power expands its empire, why does it expand? First, of course, to uh, gain more territory. And the second reason is loot, money. Because without money, that empire cannot be sustained. And that was the mistake of Raghunath Rao. He kept on spending money to expand, but he never brought money back. And that is why the Peshwa's debt increased to 80 lakh rupees. So now in place of Shrimanta Raghunath Rao, Dattaji Shinde was sent to the north along with Jankoji Shinde, his nephew. Dattaji Shinde's elder brother Jayapaji Shinde had already died. And that is why the Shinde army was now under Dattaji's control. Dattaji went to the Punjab. Adina Beg had just died, so things had to be organized. He sent Sabaji Shinde to Peshawar, Tukoji Holkar to Atak, Bapuji Trimbak to Multan and Naro Shankar Dani to Lahore. Now to collect funds, he decided to go to the east, uh, to, to the Bengal side. And for that, he had to cross the Ganga. One art that the Marathas had never ever mastered was crossing rivers. They always had to pay the locals for building uh, bridges of boats for them. So the Marathas, due to this reason, could never cross rivers on their own and always depended on someone. And this uh, delayed their campaigns. Srimanta Nanasai Peshwa had told couple of things to Dattaji Shinde. 
and one of those things was to be aware of the snake as i told you before that snake was none other than najib uddola and disregarding the peshwa's advice out of all the people in north india the taji shinde asked najib uddola to build him a bridge of boats across the ganga river and najib uddola said yes i will help you and so um, najib uddola began his work and that work was to get help from the rohilas of bareilly and shuja uddola to fight against the taji shinde the taji shinde was calm the taji shinde thought that najib uddola would actually build him the bridge of boats but najib uddola was doing something else all together now alamgir the second at delhi was being oppressed by imadul mulk the wazir and so he wrote letters to abdali to come and help him uh, so did najibuddola of course he would and even the kingdoms of jaipur and jodhpur who were against the marathas wrote letters to ahmed shah abdali and told him to come here so abdali decided to come to india after repeated letters now the rohilas of bareilly and also shuja uddola initially disagreed to join najib uddola however najib uddola told them that if you don't join me one day or another the marathas will come and take over your kingdom which actually made sense to them so they decided to join najib uddola and now dattaji shinde went to gad mukteshwar and najib uddola was just organizing his army now the rain started to come in and najib uddola told dattaji shinde that the rains are too strong and he cannot build the bridge of boats dattaji shinde was annoyed at this fact however he could do nothing dattaji shinde moved to miranpur which is close to shukratal and najib was camped at shukratal shukratal has many ravines and shrubs and najib uddola hid his foot soldiers in those shrubs he also dug out many trenches around his camp Najib Uddola also erected a bridge of boats for himself so that he could keep communicating with his allies and also the food supply could keep coming in now um the thing is that the terrain in shukratal is very marshy and so the marathas cavalry charges over there were basically useless and that is why najib uddola had chosen that area now dattaji was getting impatient the sayyids of barha who were shias and were against najib uddola joined dattaji shinde and on september 1759 dattaji shinde attacked najib's camp at shukratal now all of those rohilas who were hidden in the bushes started a deadly fire and the sayyids of barha and the marathas both uh, faced a heavy loss jankoji shinde himself sustained a bullet wound after that dattaji shinde ordered govind pant bundele the maratha officer to attack najib's capital najibabad so govind pant bundele attacked najibabad and najib uddola could do nothing about it then hafiz rehmat khan and dunde khan who were the rohilas of bareilly attacked govind pant bundele but they were defeated and for a few days najib uddola's food supply was stopped by govind pant bundele but then shuja uddola's troops came in and bundele had to retreat govind pant bundele wrote about this incident to sada shivarao bhau who was on a campaign against the nizam and was camped at vanauri abdali made his way to india in september 1759 abdali entered india with 40000 soldiers through the bolan pass and jahan khan entered india with 20000 soldiers through the khyber pass now the afghans first attacked multan bapuji trimbak had to flee then sabaji shinde who was at peshawar also had to flee because of jahan khan's army later even lahore was captured by the afghans all of the retreating marathas reached dattaji's camp in november 1759 dattaji realized that now abdali himself was coming to india and to face the new threat he decided to go towards the yamuna and to delhi malhara horkar had spent most of 1759 in jaipur fighting against madho singh and dattaji had sent him many letters for help On 27 December 1759 Malhar Rao Holkar received Dattaji's letter and he decided to go towards Delhi Malhar Rao hadn't realized the urgency of Dattaji's situation 
However, Abdali had and Abdali knew that he had to finish Dattaji before Holkar reached with help. In November 1759, Imadul Mulk went to assist Dattaji Shinde. When Imad was at Hindon, he realized that Alamgir II had sent letters to Ahmad Shah Abdali for help and when he understood that, he decided to kill Alamgir II. So on the same day when the soldiers retreating from Punjab reached Dattaji, Alamgir II was killed at Delhi. Even former Wazir Intazam Uddala, who was in prison, was killed in jail itself and a prince, Shah Jahad III, was placed on the throne. Peshwa Nana Saheb had literally no idea about what was going on with Dattaji Shinde. The Peshwa, along with his brother, Sadashivrao Bhau, started a fresh campaign against the Nizam. The Maratha's artillery chief, Muzaffar Khan Gardi, was not on good terms with Bhau Saheb. Bhau Saheb thought that they should recruit Muzaffar's nephew, Ibrahim Khan Gardi. Ibrahim was not as experienced as Muzaffar, However, Muzaffar had become completely faithless. Ibrahim Khan Gardi worked for the Nizam brothers, Nizam Ali and Nizam Salabat Jang. Nizam Ali, due to some reasons, had told Ibrahim Khan Gardi to quit his job. So, Sadashivrao Bhau immediately recruited Ibrahim Khan Gardi into the Maratha army in November 1759. Now, Muzaffar Khan Gardi heard about this and he decided to kill Bhau Sahib. Bhau Saheb was at his camp at Vanauri. He was writing something. And Muzaffar Khan Gardi told his son-in-law Haider Jung to go and kill Bhau Saheb. Haider Jung took out his knife. He entered Bhau Saheb's tent and struck Bhau Saheb on his back. Bhau Saheb bent forward towards the ink pot and that's why he was saved. Bhau Saheb did not die. However, he did sustain a very fatal wound. Now Haider Jung was caught. Haider Jung finally told everyone that Muzaffar was behind this. Muzaffar the very next day was hanged and Haider Jung was um, executed near the Dhal, which is below the Zari Patka or the Maratha flag. Due to the intense winter, a thick fog developed over the Yamuna River and it was spreading across the Ganga Yamuna Doab. Sabaji Shinde with 700 soldiers was present at Buradi Ghat. Now because of the fog, he couldn't see anything. All of the Rohilas and the Afghans started to hide amongst all of the shrubs and they ambushed Sabaji's army. This news reached Dattaji's camp and Dattaji sent Bayaji Shinde, who was the son of Sabaji Shinde, with 5,000 soldiers. And then news came that Bayaji Shinde had been killed. Then Dattaji Shinde decided to go there himself. He leapt on his horse and told Jankoji Shinde to stay there itself and then he set out for Buradi Ghat. Of course, Jankoji Shinde did not listen to his uncle and he followed Dattaji Shinde to Buradi Ghat. Now Dattaji reached and he was fighting relentlessly with his spear. Suddenly someone shot him in his eye and Dattaji Shinde fell down. Dattaji was injured. And then Kutub Shah, one of the Rohila generals, came out. He asked him, Kyo Patel or Ladoge kya? Dattaji looked at him and said, Kyo nahi, bachenge, to aur bhi ladenge. <laughs>